Hello students, my name is Priyanka and I am your digital mentor. So today we are starting unit 3 in geography, our motherland that is India. So this unit is starting from chapter 6 and the name of the chapter 6 is India, location and physical divisions. So get the ball rolling. Location and extent the great mountains of the north, the great peninsula plateau and western desert, the island groups, the cycle of seasons, factors determining climate, physiographic divisions, the northern plains, the coastal plains, climatic variations in India, distribution of rainfall. Now, geographical terms delta region near mouth of a river with a network of distributaries usually triangular in shape dance the broad valleys in the outer himalayas estuary the tidal mouth of a river indian standard time the local time of 82 degree 30 minute east which is the standard meridian of India. Lagoon A salt water lake India our motherland is vast, old and diverse. It is the cradle of one of the oldest civilization in the world. Over the years people of different races and faiths have made India their home. This is reflected in the diversity of language, culture and religion that we see in the country today. Today, with more than 1 billion people, India is the second most populous country in the world. India is the continent of Asia. The land that makes up India comprises the mainland and the number of islands. As you perhaps know, land surrounded by water on the three sides is called peninsula. The mainland of India is a large peninsula bounded by sea on three sides. Lofty mountains in the north separate it from the rest of Asia. India is rich in natural resources and has diverse physical features. Location and extent. India is the world's seventh largest country with an area of about 3.28 million square kilometers. The Tropic of Cancer run about midway through the country. North to south from 37 degree 6 minutes north to 8 degree 4 minutes north. The mainland of India stretches over 3200 km. It lies entirely in the tropical and subtropical regions of the northern hemisphere. West to east, India stretches for about 2900 km from 68 degree 7 minute east to 97 degree 25 minutes east. The great east-west extent different in longitude of about 29 degree leads to a great variation in local time. The local time changes by 4 minutes for every 1 degree difference in longitude. So the time difference between the westernmost point in Gujarat and the easternmost point in Arunachal Pradesh is about 2 hours. However, for the sake of uniformity, the local time of 82 degree 30 minute east longitude is taken as the Indian Standard Time, IST. The Indian Standard Time is 5 and a half hour ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. The 82 degree 30 minute east longitude is called the Standard Meridian of India. Peninsula India is roughly triangular in shape. To the west of the Indian Peninsula 
it lies in the arabian sea and to the east the bay of bengal to the south is the indian ocean the length of indian coast lands bordering the sea is about 6100 km while the land frontier is about 15200 km long neighbors to the north of india are china nepal and bhutan and to the east bangladesh and myanmar to the west and the northwest are pakistan and afghanistan in the south separated from india by the palk strait lies the island country of sri lanka to the south of lakshadweep lies maldives not far from the andaman and nicobar island lies our closest southeast asian neighbors indonesia malaysia and thailand physiographical divisions india can be broadly divided into following five physiographic divisions first the great mountains of the north second the northern plains third the great peninsula plateaus and western desert fourth the coastal plains five the island groups first one the great mountains of the north the great mountains of the north india consist of the himalayas and karakoram ranges the himalayan range extend between river indus on the north west and river brahmaputra on the east it has nearly 2500 km of length while its breadth varies from 150 km to 450 km the himalayas are the young fold mountain and they largely consist of sedimentary rocks some of the mountain peaks exceed 800 m of height in fact the himalayas are the highest mountain of the world with mount everest as the highest mountain peak that is 8848 m the other high peak are mount kanchanjunga 8598 m nanga parbat that is 8126 m mount makalu that is 8481 m dhwalgiri that is 8172 m nanda devi 7817 m and nancha barwa 7756 m from north to south the himalayas consist of three parallel ranges a the greater himalayas or the inner himalayas these are the highest range of the himalayan system this range is largely snow covered that is why it is often referred to as himadri its average altitude is 6000 meter almost all the important mountain peaks are located in this range this is the northernmost range of the himalayas b part the lesser himalayas or the middle himalayas they lie to the south of the inner himalayas its average altitude varies between 3900 meter to 4500 meter this part of the himalayas have some beautiful valleys like the kashmir valley and the kathmandu valley it also has some beautiful hill stations such as delosi shimla masuri nainital darjeeling etc c part is the outer himalayas these are also known as the shivalik it is the southernmost range its highest varies from 900 to 1200 meter these ranges are narrow and discontinuous they were well developed only on the western himalayas the north eastern extension of the himalayas is called purvanchal or the eastern hills their average elevation is around 3000 meter they are known as patkai and naga hills in the north 
In Meghalaya, they are known as Garo, Khasi and Jantia Hills. While in the south, they are known as the Lushai and Mizo Hills. So let's connect to geography. The Himalayas form the youngest chain of four mountain in the world. These mountains were thrown up by the gradual northward movement of the Indian continent plate. Remains of ocean dwelling organism found at different places on the Himalaya suggest that this area was originally a sea. The sea has been named the Tethi Sea. The Karakoram Ranges enters India in the North Kashmir and moves eastward into Tibet, where it is known as the Kalash Range. It includes the plateau of Aksai Chin. It has lofty mountains including Mount K or Mount Godwin Austin. 8,611 meter, which is the second highest peak in the world after Mount Everest. The Siachen is an important glacier here. The Ladakh and Zaska ranges lies to the south of Karakoram on either side of River Indus as it flows from the northeast to the northwest. Second, the Northern Plains. To the south of the northern mountains lies an extensive flat plain known as the Indo-Gangetic Plain. It is made up of alluvium deposited by the river Indus, Ganga, Brahmaputra and their tributaries. These alluvial deposits make the plain extremely fertile and suitable for agriculture. The northern plains stretch for about 2500 km from Punjab in the west to Assam in the east, from west to east. They can be divided into three sections, the Indus Plain, the Ganga Plain and the Brahmaputra Plain. The Indus Plain is drained by the river Indus and its tributaries Chennap, Jhelum, Ravi, Bees and Satluj. The major part of the plain lies in Pakistan. The Indian portion is located in Punjab and Haryana. Connect to Geography There are many passes in the Himalayas. A pass is a point in a mountain range that is lower than the surrounding peaks. It forms a natural way across a mountain chain. Some of the important passes located along the Greater Himalayas are Zojila, Chipkila, Nathula, Bondela, Baralachala, La in the Tibetan language means pass. The Ganga plain is the most extensive part of the northern plains and covers Uttar Pradesh, northern Madhya Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal. It is drained by river Ganga and its tributaries Yamuna is the chief tributary of Ganga. The other important ones are Ghagra, Gandak, Kosi, Sun and Damodar. The Brahmaputra plain is located in Assam. It is drained by river Brahmaputra and its tributaries Subansiri, Bharali, Manas, Dhansiri, Tista, etc. The Brahmaputra rises in Tibet where it is called the Sangpo. It enters India in Arunachal Pradesh and after flowing through Assam, it enters Bangladesh where it is joined by the Ganga. These two rivers together form the largest delta in the world, the Ganga Brahmaputra Delta. It is also known as the Sundarban Delta and a major part of it lies in Bangladesh. Connect to Geography The construction of the 468 km long Indira Gandhi Canal has changed the faces of the western desert. It is the world's second largest irrigation canal. Since its construction, more and more land has been brought under cultivation.
third one is the Great Peninsula Plateau and Western Desert. The Great Indian Plateau lies to the south of the northern plains of India. It is the oldest structure of Indian subcontinent and is made up of hard igneous and metamorphic rocks. The Narmada River divides this plateau into two parts, the Central Highlands and in the north and the Deccan Plateau in the south. A part Central Highlands To the north of Vindhya Ranges lies the northern part of the plateau. It is known as the Central Highlands but is not very high. It is mainly consists of Malwa Plateau, Bundelkhan Plateau, Bagelkhan Plateau and Chota Nagpur Plateau. The Aravli Ranges form the northwest boundary of this part of the plateau and further west of Aravli Ranges lie the Greater Indian Desert. To the north of this region lies the Satluj Ganga Plain. B part Deccan Plateau from the Vindhya mountain to the southern trip of India lies the other part of the plateau known as the Deccan Plateau which is triangular in shape. The northern part of it is marked by Vindhyachal range and is eastern extension by Mahadev hills. Kaimur hills and Maikal range the northwest part of Deccan Plateau is made up of igneous rocks as a result of the lava flow on this region in the geological past. Due to weathering these rocks, yielding rich soils called black soils, which are highly suitable for cultivation of cotton. The western edges of Deccan Plateau is marked by a mountain range known as the Western Ghats. It is a continuous range running towards Kanyakumari. This is known as Sahayadri in the north and Nilgiris in the south. And further south, it is called Anaimalai and Kadaman Hills. Anaimudi, located on Nilgiri, is the highest mountain peak of the plateau. The eastern edge of the plateau is bounded by a broken range of mountains known as Eastern Ghats. This range is broken into small hills by the east flowing rivers of the plateau and it is comparatively lower than the Western Ghats. The Deccan Plateau gently slopes towards the east and all the major rivers like Godavari, Mahanadi, Krishna and Kaveri flow towards into the Bay of Bengal. But Narmada and Tapti flow westwards through the rift valley into the Arabian Sea. These rivers are rain fed and hence seasonal. Therefore, unlike the Himalayan rivers, they are not suitable for navigation. Fourth one, the coastal plains. The plateau of peninsula India is flanked by two coastal strips of flat land one of the east and the other of the west side. The plain of the west coast stretches from the Gulf of Kutch to Kanyakumari. It is now here more than 65 kilometers in width. The northern part of this west coastal strip to the south of Saurashtra, that is Kathiawar, coast is called the Konkan coast and the southern part of the Malabar coast it has lagoons, salt lakes and backwaters along the coast of Kerala. The good soil of this coastal strip is made up of eroded material brought down by the swift and short rivers that flow from the western ghats during the rainy season. For the rest, the coast is rocky or fringed with salt and so there are very few places fit for harbors. They are however mainly inlets which make good natural harbors in Mumbai, Goa, Kandla and Kochi. Connect to geography. 
द रिवर गोदावरी इज नोन एज द गंगा ऑफ द साउथ द प्लेन ऑफ द ईस्ट कोस्ट इज ब्रॉडर दैन दैट ऑफ द वेस्ट कोस्ट एट सर्टन प्लेसेज इट इज मोर देन फोर हंड्रेड एंड एटी किलोमीटर्स एंड वेथ इट इज ऑल्सो लेस रॉकी एंड द सी अलॉन्ग द कोस्ट इज शेलो द रिवर्स महानदी गोदावरी कृष्णा एंड कावेरी क्रॉसिंग द स्ट्रिप ऑफ फ्लैट लैंड कैरी मच वाटर स्पेशली ड्यूरिंग द रेनी सीजन एंड फ्रॉम लार्ज डेल्टास before they empty their water into the sea in the places of these river deltas the alluvial soil is very fertile the coastal strip along tamil nadu state is called koromandal coast let's connect to geography corals are skeletal remains of tiny marine organism called polyps when polyps die other polyps grow on their hard skeletons and the corals just keep growing in size forming islands in the sea the great barrier reef in australia is the best example of coral reef fifth the island groups in addition to the mainland india has two sets of islands the andaman and nicobar islands and the lakshadweep islands a part andaman and nicobar islands These islands are situated in the Bay of Bengal. These are basically volcanic islands and the sea around them have plenty of coral reefs. Close to the main group of islands is the only active volcano in India. It erupted recently after remaining quiet for 200 years. Most of these islands are uninhabited. Some of the tribes found here are still very primitive and do not welcome visitors. B part Lakshadweep Islands the Lakshadweep Minicoy and Amindivi island group in the Arabian Sea are part of the Lakshadweep they are made of coral the skeletons of a particular form of marine life many of these island are horse shaped and are called atolls most of the islands here are uninhabited they are smaller in number and size compared to the nicobar islands so students it's time to wrap up india is the world's seventh largest country with an area of about 3.28 million square kilometers the northern mountain chain has karakoram and himalayan ranges the northern plains are drained by the indus ganga and brahmaputra rivers the coastal plain consists of konkan and malabar coast lagoons called backwaters during the winter season the day are warm and nights are bitterly cold and the last one is the country has an uneven distribution of rainfall and has been divided into four zones So children it's time to take your leave so bye we'll meet in the next class